Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. Psalm 22, King David is lamenting to God, just in a state of despair, um, surrounded by enemies. He is the rightful king of Israel and yet he is alone in the wilderness, and so he's crying out to God, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And these are the words that Jesus speaks on the cross as well. Uh, like King David, Jesus was no stranger to suffering. He suffered emotionally and spiritually um, and physically, and yet nothing compared to the suffering he felt when God turned his back on him and poured out his wrath upon him. And I think we can all relate to that sense of despair that King David pours out. Who of us has not said the prayer, God, where are you? God, why have you forsaken me? God, why have you left me? And yet there's so much comfort in just three words that Jesus says on the cross just before he dies. It is finished. Just this past week, uh, my two-year-old son got sick with pneumonia and he was pitiful. It was so sad, and he was wheezing and just lethargic, and my heart was so broken, and I was thinking to myself, I would rather die than for my child to ever suffer the way that he's suffering. And Jesus spoke to me in that moment, and he said, I know exactly how you feel. Jesus knew that his people were suffering because they couldn't be with God. They couldn't be in the presence of God. And so he took that wrath upon himself in order for that veil to be torn, in order for us to come face to face with God again, so that our lament could turn into praise. At the end of Psalm 22, David proclaims and declares, generations will come that will say, God has done it. It is finished. 
And so as we see Jesus yield his spirit, we know in that moment that we never have to suffer away from God's presence again. And so if anyone is lamenting now, if anyone finds himself in a place of despair or in a particularly difficult season of life, just remember that the hope we have through Jesus Christ will make all of this pain untrue and that you have a Father who will hold you and receive you with loving arms anytime you go to Him. Thank you.